Motorbikes, since their inception, one piston went up to two, three, four. Some production bikes had five or six. This bike though, how many pistons do you think it has? No pistons, but a two rotor rotary engine, small and compact, 220 horsepower, perfect for going in a motorcycle. But this engine is built from scratch, which is what allows it to be such the ideal engine for this limited edition motorbike. The Crichton CR700W has been built around this unique rotary engine. This means the chassis can be simplified to take advantage of the compact power unit. The frame is an evolution of the Norton race bikes developed by Brian Crichton in the 80s and made by Spondon. In a bit of clever engineering, the frame itself doubles as the oil tank for the engine. So the advantage of the rotary, as you've been speaking about, is the engine is basically all under here now. Isn't yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's just, there's nothing really sticking up here, really, um, like, like a four-stroke engine would be. And again, the advantage again is weight. So what's the, the all up weight of the bike? The, the whole bike has got a dry weight of 130 kilos, which is really quite light. I tried to actually, the, the original concept I tried to do was like a, like a, a you know, a 500 Grand Prix two stroke bike, which you, you can't buy. You, you, you can't get a, you, you can't, you'd have to pay millions to get a most cheap e-bike. So I was trying to make something that performed very similar, that wasn't ridiculous money, you know, that people could buy and have a load of fun on. That's, you need to certainly have a lot of fun on this. And obviously you've had various riders on this bike. Yeah, What's yeah. the feedback that you had? They, they all said it was absolutely fantastic, really. Guy Martin rode, you know, he, all he kept saying was, it's fast, that is it fast, that's all he kept saying. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they, they said it's just like nothing else. Because it's very light. Because there's no, the, the, the weight, you know, the centre of gravity is quite low on it. And again, that light weight and the central gravity position really helps you with the geometry yeah, and yeah. with the suspension, which is yeah, quite yeah. unique on this bike, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's quite light, it's very light to flick, you know. It's obviously hasn't got the high weight for the, you know, weight transfer, so you can run fairly soft suspension on it because of the weight. The suspension comes in the form of an innovative half a twin shock arrangement. Damping is provided by a single bitubo shock absorber on the right-hand side of the swing arm. This allows for a certain amount of flex in the swing arm. Now obviously with this bike you've got carbon wheels, carbon bodywork and this beautiful shape of the fairing and the seat unit. But the thing that really interests me and first grabbed my attention this bike is the exhaust. Now obviously we're seeing exhaust coming out the tail unit for, for donkey's years, it's nothing special. But your exhaust is something a little bit more special isn't it? It's actually doing more than just taking the exhaust fuse yeah, yeah. out of the engine. Yeah, the exhaust is actually doing the cooling of the engine as well, because although it's a water cooled engine on the outside, the, the rotors are still air cooled. Mm -hmm. So it has to have air flow. So basically, the intakes are through here. It's tubes there connected to the outside of the engine, you go through the engine, as we said before. It came out, came out at the back of the engine into the exhaust. Now this is one of the, this is one of those exhausts. And what we've got here is, this is the exhaust gas coming out here. There's an actual nozzle on the end of there. There's a, you can see there's a venturi shape here. So that, that high velocity exhaust gas coming out of there creates a vacuum there, which this, is, this tube is connected to that area. And what it does is the, the exhaust gas rushes out there, causes a big vacuum, it then pulls the heat out the engine through this tube. It mixes in this chamber, which, 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 and then comes out, there's a bit of sinusing on the end. But uh, so you, you've actually got coldish air being mixed with the very hot gas coming out of here. That's basically, and the thing with that is there's no moving parts with it at all. It's proportional to throttle, so more power, more vacuum, more cooling. You know, so that's the, the idea behind that. That's beautiful piece of and engineering. The, the reason it's that shape is like a rotor shape. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hadn't realised that, but it makes yeah. complete sense now I see it. Yeah, it's yeah. all those little details when you've yeah. designed everything from front to rear on a bike, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's completely designed. Completely from scratch, yeah. And manufactured largely on site here? In house, yeah, the machine and a lot of the machine is done in house, yeah. Fantastic. Well, we've seen the bike, we've seen a little bit of the engine and some of the clever technology in there, so let's go and have a look at what exactly is going on inside that rotary engine.
strikes me immediately being a motorcyclist is it's tiny. Yeah, it is, it is tiny compared to a piston engine when you think all that would be up here, all the cams and everything. Yeah, it's just, it's just quite a small package. And how much does this weigh? The whole engine weighs 43 kilos. And that's for how much horsepower? 220 horsepower at the shaft, really. Which makes it ideal for a bike, really, in terms yeah. of it's the tiny size, it's got the weight, it's got the power. Yeah. Uh, what about something like vibration, which is another one of those questions you get with? No vibration at all. It's actually all dynamically balanced. It's got bob weights in left and right here, and it? so it's, it, there's a balance machine that goes on in the process of doing the shaft. So it's just like an electric motor, absolutely no vibration at all. Okay, so this is a rotary engine, so the thing that we're going to do now, let's just talk about how the rotary cycle works. Well, there's, there's basically mainly three parts, really. There's the eccentric shaft, uh, which is, you can think of as a crankshaft, but we call it an eccentric shaft. There's the rotor, and then there's the, the, the rotor housings uh, there. Uh, so there's only really the three parts. There's obviously bearings in there and that, but there's three moving parts, basically. It runs on the four-stroke principle, so that's in effect like the pistons at top dead centre. This is an inlet port, that's an exhaust port. So it runs around in this direction on this one. So as that, as that turns like that, you can see the volume is increasing. That's drawing an intake. That's like a piston engine at bottom dead centre, so that's, that's maximum volume. And then it actually keeps turning, and then that's, that compresses. So that's compressing the mixture as it comes around there, so that's like top dead centre, but just before top dead centre you get the spark, spark plugs here, that obviously ignites it, burns rapidly, which then pushes the rotor around, which is where you get the power from, and that, so that's expanding now, so that's like a, a piston engine at bottom dead centre, but before, just before that the, the exhaust port's opened and it, it gets exhaust, so basically it's, it's doing, it's a continuous flow thing, compared to a, a normal four stroke, which has obviously got a dead stroke where it's doing the overlap of the valves. So basically th that one's just firing there, this one's intaking, that one's compressing, that one's power stroke, that's exhausting, that's intaking. So it's, it's a constant intake and a constant exhaust, and so it's a constant flow engine really. But it is only firing once per turn. Some people get mixed up thinking it fires three per turn, it only fires once. Where are these parts inside here? So where are the two rotors? Yeah, the two rotors are inside these rotor housings. And there's, a, there's a, what we call an intermediate plate here. Obviously, this is the, the shaft is in the centre line, the eccentric shaft. So it goes left to right on bearings on each end. And, the, and the, these are actually at 180 degrees, the, the rotors. And yeah, so that's how that, that works. And then you drive out yeah conventional clutch it's, it's got it's got a gear it's, this one's gear drive the other engines i did with was a belt drive or a chain drive this is a gear drive so this drives a gear but because i wanted to keep the engine rotating backwards for to help torque reaction to stop wheelies which these want to wheelie easy anyway it's got an intermediate gear down here an idle gear which then obviously drives the clutch and so that's why we can still keep it going backwards and obviously got a six speed uh, it's a special gearbox, it's called a dog ring gearbox that Nova Transmissions made for especially. So whereas a normal gearbox, the selector forks moves the gears as well, this just moves selector, selectors, that's just the left and right handed dogs, and it's just very fast. So it has all the, the arms on the back, on the selector arms are on the back, the actual front are all fixed. So really it looks like it's the ideal package, doesn't it, for a motorbike? I mean, you couldn't really want for much more. Well, no, <laughs> it's quite simple in, in effect. Very few moving parts and nothing to service on it at all. No valves to, to do or anything, you know. Well, thanks to Rotron and to Crichton for this fascinating video about this motorbike. If you've enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe, and watch us in the future for more videos.